Hey guys, welcome back to Nerd Crave. So I've got a special guest here today, and where this is Sean. Say hi, Sean. Oh, hi, Sean. <laughs> we yeah. are going to be discussing, because this is the week of the PS2 anniversary, 20-year anniversary, we are going to be discussing some games for the PS2 library that are absolutely worth going back to and playing on a physical PS2 today in 2020. So I've got five or six games, Sean's got five or six games. Sean, why don't you start us off, show us the first game that you've got that you feel is still relevant to play in 2020. I feel that Drakengard here is relevant to play. A lot of people uh, don't like it. I didn't like it when I played it. And kind of, so I kind of ignored it for many years. And then I found out that the final secret ending is connected to the Nier series. Oh, that's interesting. And, and relevant, so if you want to get the prequel to Nier, that's this guy, the first Drakengard. Yeah. And, uh, it is really good once you get into it. I mean, I, I totally did one. It's slow, but it, it's just hypnotic and addictive. And guys, uh, you know, I'm sorry for all of you out there. We are having some internet connectivity issues. So the visual fidelity is coming and going, but please stick around with us. We do have some interesting games to talk about. So for my first game that I wanted to talk about, and uh, this one is one that meant a lot to me back in the day and that I still go back to and play on a pretty regular basis with uh, my cousin. This is a great multiplayer game, and that is Twisted Metal Black. Uh, I absolutely love the Twisted Metal franchise. I played all the games as they were relevant back in the day on the PS1. Twisted Metal Black, though, really steps up the multiplayer. Uh, it kind of gives you some really big sort of open world maps, if you will. Not really open world, but really large maps to play on. And uh, some really interesting multiplayer stuff where you've got kind of challenges and stuff that you would kind of assimilate with a, a more modern game. This was really breakthrough at the time, and uh, it's still great to go back to today. What do you got next, Sean? Uh, I got Amplitude. This is the sequel to Frequency, which was the first game to get me hooked on music games. You and I was I'm, totally against it. I'm not even familiar with that game. Tell me a little bit about it. Uh, it's it's like, uh, you know, Rock Band or Guitar Hero. See the tracks there? Yeah. And it's made by the same people that make Guitar Hero and Rock Band. Okay. And uh, yeah, I've been hooked ever since Frequency. And, but this one just uses a controller, and you switch between vocals and drums and bass and stuff. And you just create a song as you go along. It's kind of got a sci-fi theme to it. Really wicked cool. For those and then, of, of course, once Guitar Hero came, well, yeah. For those of us trying to actually see what we're holding up to the screen here, because we've got some pretty bad right. uh, footage, I'm going to put some gameplay footage over top of this stuff, so yeah. I'll check it out later. But uh, that game sounds pretty cool. Are you into music oh. games like Rock Band and stuff? I didn't used to be until the prequel to this one, Frequency. And... I, I didn't even want to play it, and then a coworker told me, play the demo on the PlayStation demo disc, and I'm like, okay, because you told me to. Yeah. I played the three songs, and we had like three hours. I just kept, couldn't stop. It was just so, and for many never, years after, I hear music, I just kind of tap to it. I've never really played like a Guitar Hero game. I mean, I think I've messed around with it at a friend's house when we were drinking some pops or whatever, but <laughs> like, I've never really gone out of my way to play one of those types of games, so I'm actually kind of interested in checking that out. Uh, so the next game I have on the list here, and this is kind of two games, I'm kind of cheating, but they sort of go together, and uh, that is Baldur's Gate uh, 1 and 2, Dark Alliance 1 and 2. Um, these games, this is pretty much the only way, I mean, these were available on the original Xbox as well, but these games haven't really been ported over to other more modern systems as far as I know. Uh, this version and the Xbox version are really the only ways to play these, and these games are absolutely fantastic. If you liked the Baldur's Gate games on the PC, uh, these are more of an approachable kind of, uh, you know, third-person adventure, but with that same sort of atmosphere and that same sort of lore that goes with the Dungeons & Dragons sort of series. Uh, I really got a kick out of these games, and I still go back and play them pretty regularly. Now, I know we got... Uh, Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 and Icewind Dale and stuff released on the Switch in a remastered form. But these two haven't been remastered yet, as far as I know. I don't think so. So what have you got for us next? Uh, Spy Hunt, the first PS2 one. Oh, that's and a great game. I just kind of thought, be, I thought it was just going to be some sort of whatever racer thing, but 
it is so tight the level design is perfect and it's just difficult enough where you know you can do it but it takes yeah. quite a few tries to do a level and i kind of want 100 percent one day yeah but, uh, as it is right now it's just so it's like, just super fun for, for the for those of us who don't really know like describe a little bit of the gameplay like it's obviously a car game but what do you do in the game yeah um it's it, in a sort of way it's a it's a racer because you go fast in a car or maybe a boat or it changes mid-level right but it's also uh targets to hit along the way uh maybe you're chasing someone to take them down like in burnout right right or uh hitting doing certain jumps and hitting certain fusing bombs or whatever every level has its own objective there's a storyline tying it all it's like james bond but better than the james bond games even yeah and did you play Ooh, this? Uh, did you play this kind of back in the day, or is this something you discovered recently? Uh, I think I bought it back in the day, but it, I probably played it be five years ago for the first time. Right. I have a copy of it too. But I haven't really people. played it that much. Uh, I did kind of the first level there, and then kind of the, I guess it was like a town or whatever, and it looked pretty cool, but which I just never really picked it back up. So when you do, you'll love it. The yeah. controls are spot on. Can't look for can't. See any better in the ps2 for controls oh fantastic all right so what am i gonna pick for my next game here let's go with let's go with this one this is a classic now if you like uh the classic shmup the shoot 'em up games uh this is a game that mm -hmm. really can't as far as i know be got on any other platform and it's absolutely worth going back to and that is our type final uh, this is a fantastic shoot 'em up game where mm -hmm. they really mess with perspective. You're kind of going left to right and then top to bottom and then through some like 3D spaces and around corners and stuff. The graphics are really spot on. They look great. Um, it's pretty challenging as most R type games are. Uh, you know, if you're prepared to start tearing your hair out, uh, you, you're going to die a lot. That's the way it is. But this is one of the more. I, I should say better examples of a modern shoot 'em up done right. Yeah, I, I've played a little bit of it. Uh, I played more of Delta, the one on the PS One. Yeah. Uh, I, I suck at shooting. I love them, but I suck <laughs> at them. So uh, they're just a thing I dabble in. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I suck at them, but I'm not fantastic at them. I'm generally comfortable in the shoot 'em up landscape, just because that's what I grew up with on the Turbo Graphics 16. That was a shoot 'em up machine. Uh, you know, which I had a TG-16 back when I was like 12 or 13 years old, so that's kind of where I cut my teeth. Um, but I don't think anybody's really good at shoot 'em ups or if they are, you know, I don't know any. I mean, those things are hard. It's all about memorization and yeah. quick reflexes. Yeah. So what do you got for us next? Uh, you talked about this a little bit on your video with Papa Pete, uh, Jack X. Uh, um, yes. I, I like the Jack series. Um, I can't seem to get into the last one. But uh, this one I bought for $5 at EB Games because no one is buying it. They're looking to get rid of it. I thought, okay, yeah. it's going to be some throwaway Bargain. game, but no, spot on. Bargain bin games good are great for 500, but man. they're a little different. If you... Yeah, bargain bin what, great games great? are great. Like with the PS2, there are so many yeah. great games that you can pick up for 5 bucks or less two bucks at a pawn shop and there's some amazing experiences to be had and that's kind of why we make this kind of video as youtubers because like people need to be able to know how to separate the good from the junk what's shovelware and what's an actual gem so they're all gems <laughs> <laughs> so uh i love the bad too uh yeah with the jack combat racing had you played the other Jack games in the series before you bought that? Like, are you, were you familiar oh, yeah. with the franchise? I, I, yeah, I each game I bought when they were new. Uh, that one I always kept up on. Yeah. It was only the last game I haven't really got into. The, the PSP one, and I bought it again on PS2 thinking maybe I'll like it better with the, with the full controller, but I, I don't, there's nothing wrong. I just can't get into it. Jack and Dexter must really be different developers that got into it. The, the Jack and Dexter series really reignited my love of platformers and to this day I absolutely love a platformer with a really beautiful story. I was actually playing uh, Ori and the Blind Forest uh, a little bit over the last little while and I mean that's more of a Metroidvania but it is a platformer in the loose sense and I just love that like you know that deep story. 
um, to go along with that kind of platforming mechanic, and, and Jack really started that off. I guess it's my turn. Uh... Well, then don't forget, Daxter was another one. On the PSP, yeah. Uh, I actually don't have that right now, but it is on my wish list. Uh, what do I got? Is it? Yeah, it's my it's turn. That one right? It's my turn, yeah, you just went. So, alright, so this game's a little bit on the expensive side at this point. I wouldn't say that you're going to find this in a bargain bin unless you're pretty lucky. You may expect to spend 40, 50 bucks on this, but it is definitely by all means worth it. And it's pretty much the only way that you can play this game, and that is Snoopy versus the Red Baron. Um, you know, you think, oh. you think, okay, it's a kid's game, it's a licensed game, it's gonna be crap, but this is, uh, you know, imagine... Crimson Skies on the Xbox, but with Snoopy graphics, like the Snoopy art style. Like, this is actually a challenging flight game, uh, all kinds of cool missions, the graphics are really neat. Um, you know, that whole classic Snoopy versus the Red Baron storyline, obviously, they really play off the lore there. But this is actually a really challenging flight game, and I really enjoy this game, and it is getting harder to find, so if you do find this out there somewhere at a flea market or something for 10 or 15 bucks, don't sleep on this because it's you know, it's getting harder to find. I picked it up a few years ago. I've never played it yet, but I picked it up because I knew that was one of the ones that was going to start getting up there, so yeah, uh, I probably paid like 10 bucks for it. And I guess it's your turn. I guess it's mine again, eh? Yeah. Yeah, one day I was uh, sick from work. And I was looking for a game to put in. I thought, I'm just going to see how bad this game is. Because it's one of those movie-based games. Right. They're not usually that good. So I thought I'd throw it in, see how it was. I paid like three bucks for it, probably. King Kong. Peter Jackson's King Kong. Peter Jackson's King Kong. And it was so good, I played it in one party. I, I yeah. have no idea how that game is It's just flies, as good as it is. flies right under the radar. Uh, I think it's it? fire. I like the fire mechanic. People don't expect it to be good, but it's actually it's just, such it's, a good it's, it's game. It's great. It's like, uh, you know, a, a really good adventure game. Uh, you know, really good story and good game mechanics and stuff. I, I really enjoyed yeah. that game, too. And again, if you're bargain bin hunting and you've been passing this game up because you think it's a crappy licensed game, like, uh, you know, this is an example of one of yeah, the few times when it's done right. All right, I guess it's my turn. So, then, he, oh, cool. what's that? Even though it's got PS2 graphics, yeah. Well, even PS2 graphics, it's very well designed. It looks like a cinematic masterpiece. It's almost like Peter Jackson made the game too. Yeah, you would. It's good. Yeah, the, again, the PS2, nice. like people don't give it enough credit. We've moved fairly far ahead with graphics in the last couple of generations, but graphics done right on the PS2 can look absolutely gorgeous and my next pick is an example of that now when they push the boundaries of any system with this hyper realistic stuff uh you know the call of duty games and stuff with the skin tones and things like that they don't necessarily hold up as well 20 years down the road but something like this stays relevant forever and that is odin sphere uh, odin sphere is a vanilla oh, yeah. game put out by atlas these are the same guys that are uh, making like Dragon's Crown and stuff like that. This has been remade and ported to the PS4 and it's been on the, I believe, the Vita and a couple of other systems as well. But honestly, this looks so good on the PS2 that it doesn't really look that much better on the PS4 after the remaster. Like, it just looks gorgeous. And the gameplay is pretty unique in this game. If you can pick this up for you're probably going to pay 20 or $25 for this, depending on where you find a deal. But this is a game with a lot of content. It's it's an RPG, but it's more like it's more like a like a 2D linear RPG uh, where you're kind of going through set little worlds and you beat the set of you know waves of enemies and a boss, and then you go back to a hub world and uh, like a map and go into the next uh, you know section of the world or whatever. Uh, but it's got all these RPG mechanics of leveling up your weapons and your characters and stuff, and it's it's a lot of fun. But it's a game you can beat. This is not a 100-hour RPG. You can beat this game in 10 or 15 hours, <laughs> and it's really like a bite-sized RPG that I think everybody should experience. Yeah, I think I think it almost falls in lines of more of a beat-em-up than a, an RPG. It's a beat-em-up with RPG elements, I'd say. Yeah, you know what? Because you're, you're doing a lot right. of fighting and leveling and buying items, yeah. 
you're not like searching dungeons for treasure chests and stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it's, and that's probably why it's shorter. Yeah, it definitely has those elements. Um, I really enjoy the game. Like, it's it's a game that I come back to, and that's kind of the theme of this video is games that we come back to time and time again, even in 2020. And you know, to just slap this in my PS2 and play it, this type of game you can pick up and play for. 20 or 30 minutes, beat a, beat a level or two, you know, save it and walk away, which I really appreciate. Uh, so we must be down to our last games here. I think that was my five. Have you done your five? That's right. So we've just got a couple of honorable mentions. That's right, so there. down to my last. So what's your uh, honorable mention, I guess we should say? We couldn't just keep it to five oh. games, unfortunately. <laughs> couldn't do it. Uh, so like your last one you mentioned, you could just pick it up, play some bite-sized level and go we heart katamari uh exactly that excellent excellent you, know, you pick it up to a level and i and i picked this one because i love both the first one and this one but this one's just a little bit better yeah and uh i think my best memory with it is me and a friend were playing mortal kombat shaolin monks yeah we had just finished it and that was a really hard final boss fight and so after all that bloody violence we played the level in this one where you had to pick up ten thousand flowers <laughs> so it's kind of like a nice little you know, let's get the violence out of our system, get yeah. some flowers, maybe run over a deer or two, you know, but <laughs> that's that that's just that game is just a nice relaxed game, just like uh, Flower is uh, for PS3. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I really enjoy peaceful games and like I have played a, a fair bit of Katamari. I have both the Katamari games and then I have the Katamari reroll on the Switch as well. Um, but I, I think you're right. I mm -hmm. think that game, the We Heart Katamari, is a little bit better uh, than the than the Damasi or whatever. So, um, yeah. so I guess my my honorable mention, and I mean, I usually spend a fair bit of time talking about JRPGs, and I couldn't have a list that didn't include JRPGs. But this is another game that is pretty sparse to find outside of the PS2. Um, it is available in some form on the PSP as well, um, but it hasn't really been ported now. And that is uh, that is per Persona 3 FES. Uh, hold this from my face, but there's really only a couple ways to play this game presently. Persona 4 uh, Golden was on the Vita, and it managed to make its way to PC on Steam just recently, and that's probably one of the best ways to play Persona 4, but as of yet, they have not put Persona 3 on any modern systems. It's pretty much locked to the 6th gen, um, and there's like three or four different versions of this game. Uh, there's the FES, and then there's something else that's on the PSP, and there's the original Persona 3, which was also on the PS2, and they're all slightly different experiences, but if you're a fan of JRPGs and you haven't played a Persona game, uh, this is a pretty approachable uh, Persona game in the series. It's dark, but it's not the most difficult in the series. Um, I would definitely highly recommend any Persona game, but if you're looking for PS2 games that you aren't likely going to find anywhere else, this is one of them, at least for the time being. Yeah, I have S. Um, have you got the... Uh... Persona 3 Dancing All Night game on the uh, PS4 and I think maybe Vita? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, you, want, you want to play a rhythm game, go for the Persona 3 one. <laughs> again, I, I don't really bother with rhythm games for the most part, so um, the only rhythm game... I mean, my kids have some of the Just Dance games and stuff, like they're in my collection just for the kids to play. Uh, but as far as like your Guitar Hero style rhythm games, the only game that I've ever really played is... Uh, uh, theater Rhythm Final Fantasy uh, for the mm -hmm. 3DS um, and that was mostly just because I love the Final Fantasy music um, but uh, that's a that's a pretty great game and I do enjoy that so anyway uh, what's uh, what's life well, like thing, uh, what's life like out there in Regina these days uh, you know what's the video game hunting like what's the weather like it's been snowing quite a bit uh, the video game hunting is slow as ever Right. Uh, uh, not much else, really. <laughs> it's just kind yeah. of the same old, same old. You're getting snow out uh, there. We, is, had, uh... we had a little bit of snow, uh, was it day before yesterday? We had a, you know, pretty, a day where it snowed kind of all day. That was our first snow, and it melted by the next morning, and it's, you know, back to 8 or 10 degrees now during the day. But, uh, 
Uh, it's not quite winter here yet. Have you guys pretty much committed to winter out there? Uh, no, it'll, it'll fade away. I don't know if we'll have uh, snow for Halloween. That happens, you know, quite yeah. a bit. But we'll see how this year runs. It'll be chilly, though, for sure. All right. Well, uh, that was our 10, called it 12 games that we recommend as games worth going back to in 2020. Thanks, guys, for sticking around and watching this video. Uh, if you would like to see more of Sean, uh, where can we see you, Sean? Uh, what's your YouTube channel? Uh, Electronic Emotions Program. Uh, there's not a lot on there right now, but uh, it's going to be getting up soon. Plus a second channel on its way, too. Yeah, well, we're two going we're, simultaneously. We're working on that, man. You've got a voice, and it needs to be heard. So, uh, yeah. uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna push ah. you. To, <laughs> we're gonna push you to get it out there. So, uh, thanks, Sean, for coming on. Thanks, everybody, for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and check out Sean's channel and subscribe there because I do believe that he's got a lot to offer coming up soon as well. So, thanks for your time. Stay classy, guys.